dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So we're on week six of the Incarnon rotation, and this is the first day and first couple moments that these Stalker Incarnon weapons are available. We'll be going over all the Incarnon upgrades, because it's not just the Stalker weapons this week, technically. Uh, I will show you what you can expect if you are going to be picking these up. I'm not really sure which Incarnons I'm going to go for this week either. But we did get some early previews earlier in the week uh, of the Dread and the Hate Incarnons. And uh, yeah, they both seem pretty good. So let's just go over what kind of upgrades you can throw alongside those. And we will discuss each of these Incarnons as we go over them. Uh, before we hop in though, just for the normal circuit, you have these three frame choices. Hydroid, Mirage, and Limbo. That can technically let you skip some of those quests. Alright, we got the Circuit Steel Path. We got the Zylock, Siber, Dread, Despair, and Hate Incarnon options. We're going to start from the left, and we're going to work our way across with first starting with the Zylock Incarnon. There's only normal Zylock in the game, and of course it will be headshots building this thing up with the Incarnon meter, and you can swap when you push the Alt-Fire button. So as far as Incarnon upgrade choices, we've got Precision's Payoff as the first one, increasing your base damage by plus 76. And on burst headshots, if you didn't know how this thing works, it's, it's a kind of like a burst weapon, a little bit, fires two bullets uh, once you release the trigger. On a burst headshot, increases damage by plus 20, stacks up to three times. So wow, another 60 base damage. It doesn't say when it resets either, so I'm guessing three burst headshots and you get to keep that 60 extra base damage, totaling to 136 base damage between these two buffs forever. So that sounds really strong, especially for a level one. Uh, it's also 76 base damage, which is pretty decent. On the other choice, Mauler's Magazine. You also get 76 base damage from this one. But then instead, on this one, on reload from empty, increases crit damage by plus 1x. Stacks up to 2. So these both sound really, really good. Uh, do you either want to have 60 base damage forever, or do you want to have uh, 2x extra crit damage base forever? And, of course, I think this thing's going to become crit once it throws them to the Karnon, so... Those are both sounding really good. A hard choice. I'll have to decide after I maybe get it fully leveled up. For tier 3, you usually have the utility stuff on this tier. we got increased magazine size by plus 12. Or plus 50% reload speed. This thing reloads a lot. From someone that uses the Zylock a lot before without the Incarnate and all that. This thing reloads a lot. So that would be a good one. Increased accuracy and reduces recoil by plus 60. That's a good amount of extra increased accuracy and reduced recoil there. So relatively good options for all three. I'd probably go with the reload though. And for the final evolutions, wow, they really are not joking around with this one. Okay, so here's your choices. You can either have uh, Survivor's Edge increasing crit chance and crit uh, and status chance by 20% each. That should be base before mods. I know some of them have not been base before mods, but some of them also have. So, unknown before I actually click on it. Uh, the other one, increased Commodore, uh, Commodore's Fortune increases crit chance by 32. Dang, this thing has like 7% crit chance already. So expect uh, definitely some yellow and orange crits, like every shot, if you mod this thing for crit. Uh, so yeah, Zylock looking pretty good. And the last one is 40% direct damage per stas type affecting the target. So condition overload. So honestly, all of the Incarnons for the Zylock sound really strong. So definitely consider this one if you need a good pistol primary, or good pistol DPS source. Uh, I'm debating on picking this one. It wasn't what I was going to originally choose, but I'm not sure right now. Because my Vasto is so good. So is my uh, Atomos now. The next one, the first melee of this week, is the Siber, that big cryotic sink. Now, what are we going to get from all this all this cryotic? Reach a 6x combo and then heavy attack to activate Incarnon mode. Slams create an ice field. Okay, that's better than... Hopefully it does more damage than the Fear Axe. I, I hate to keep bringing up the Fear Axe, Wraith, and Karnon, but that thing did 2 damage, like not even exaggerating. So I hope this ice field does at least like 4 damage. Uh, double the damage of the Fear Axe, so we're moving in the right direction. Additionally, you're going to be getting uh, increased melee damage by 100%, 50% heavy attack wind-up speed, 10% sprint speed, and 10% increase the bullet jump. So a good amount of mobility increases there, uh, and you're also getting heavy attack wind-up speed, as this is a relatively heavy attack weapon. Wow, that looks really cool in the picture, I'll definitely admit that. It looks like some kind of like, some like Sauron mace from Lord of the Rings. Um, okay, but it looks, the Magistar also looks kind of like that. Let's go over these Incarnon upgrades here for the Siber. Masters, Shatter is your first option, increasing base damage by plus 20. 
10 additional combo uh, on targets affected by cold stims. Wow, that's pretty good. I believe this thing has some, cord of, um, some sort of like full forced cold proc on slam attacks. So you're going to be getting like a 12x combo multiplier pretty much all the time. 10 additional combo. If that's the way I'm reading it, like you get 10 extra hits of combo per hit in an enemy that has cold on them, you will get 12x near instantly. Because, I mean, 10x per, that's, that's pretty nuts. Hit like 12 enemies, you're at 10x combo. Or 12x combo. Uh, Thane's Wrath is the other option. Increases your base damage by plus 20, so the same as the other one. And with armor over 450, increases damage by plus 40 even more. Uh, so it's going to be much more situational. I mean, like I said, this thing does have forced cold procs, I believe, on like slams or something. So the other one will be a lot, happening a lot more often. But once you get to that 10x combo, maybe you won't be actually... Or once you get that 12x combo, you won't actually be needing this anymore. So... It's going to be up to you. Um, we'll see. I mean, it creates an ice field on on slams. So I think that Master Shedder should be the, the choice here, honestly. Uh, but hey, 40 bar extra base damage is quite nice as well. Uh, for Tier 3, your utility stuff, we got plus 1 meter of range. We've got plus 60% heavy attack wind-up speed. And remember, the Incarnate Evolution gives you 50% heavy attack wind-up speed. So that's going to stack together for a lot. Uh, and then 6x combo duration. Really going to be up to your personal... Preference as a player, um, I don't think we're going to need the Heavy Attack Wind-Up Speed since the Incarnon already gives it to you. But if you want to be attacking as fast as possible with Heavy Attacks, maybe go for that one. And for the final one, we've got usually the Heavy Hitters in this slot. So for your first option, you got Mounting Avalanche. On killing enemy with 3 plus cold stacks, plus 15 initial combo uh, for 10 seconds, stacks up to 4x. So you'll get, once that's fully stacked up, you'll get 60 initial combo. It'll only last for 10 seconds. Unlike the in the Ceramic Dagger Incarnate, where the initial combo is permanent, this is going to have a duration on it. Uh, but it should be pretty easy to build. So, I think they're trying to make a play style here where you get a bunch of combo, get up to 12x, heavy attack with really fast heavy attack wind-up speed, and then have a bunch of initial combo already and get the 12x near instantly. Like, it's basically a, a 12x build that you don't have to take very long to build back up at all. And I can definitely see them putting the pieces of that out here for us. The other options are Absolute Valor, increasing your base crit gems by plus 25. That'll be very good uh, for like a viral upfront build. This thing has cold built in, I believe. So a viral build or something like that's going to be what you're going to have to run. And then Red Right Hand on first attack with primary equipped. Okay, so yeah, it increases crit damage by plus 2x. So I misread this one when it was on a, I think it was on the Ceramic Dagger. This is when, when you go from primary to melee, your first hit will be a 2x increase uh, of crit damage. So, a little bit finicky. I'd say if you're going to be wanting to go for this one, either go for Mounting Avalanche to get that 12x combo build, like, all the time, or near all the time, or go for uh, just all-round, just, like, big viral red crits and go for Absolute Valor. So, side you're looking okay, but we'll have to see how much damage that Ice Field actually does. Moving on to the, the Dread, we kind of already saw this one. DE gave it to another creator already ahead of time. It's pretty much just the Paris Prime and Karnan. Uh, so if, if the Paris Prime and Karnan was not exciting to you, don't get overly excited for the Dread and Karnan, because it's pretty much the exact same thing, which is more slash waiting. Uh, we have Headshots. We'll build the Incarnon mode. Switch to Incarnon mode to get your uh, AoE, like basically Nataruk arrows. Let's see what Incarnon evolution choices we have here. Hitman's Opportunity is going to be your first option, increasing your base damage by plus 70. And will incru also increase damage by plus 100% if an, enemy, if an enemy has less than half health. So that should be pretty good. And that's likely going to kick in on slash procs. Like let's say you like are, let's say you're fighting a really tanky enemy. And the, and the enemy is not going to die in one tick of slash proc like most enemies do. First tick of the slash proc, it will be not affected by this. Let's say that the, that tick gets them below half health though. That second slash proc should have the increased damage. For whatever reason, like if they don't, if they were to not die, like viral procs ran off or something. So it sounds pretty good, but it does nothing. The enemy has full health besides the base damage increase. The other option is going to be increasing your base damage by plus 50, so lower than Hitman's opportunity, but instead you're going to get on hit, increases crit damage by, increases, oh, increases damage by plus 10 and plus 10% 10 fire rate, stacks up to five times, resets on a miss shot. Um, so on hit, you're going to get. Small stats in the stacks up to five times. That should work with multi-shot. So in about like one, two shots, you'll have a full, uh, basically extra 100%, 100 damage, not 100% damage, but also plus 50% fire rate. And the Dread has pretty slow fire rate, so you might want to try this one out, as it should stack with multi-shot. But it does reset on, on this shot, so just keep that in mind. 
For your tier three utility options, you got projectile speed, minus zoom, or increased ammo capacity. Really gonna come up to your personal preference, but projectile speed could be pretty nice. For the heavy hitter, big upgrades at the end, we've got uh, Survivor's Edge giving increased crit chance and status chance, and this thing is a mostly slash weighted weapon. The Incarnon will have base heat, so you might actually make pretty good use of that status chance increase. Uh, and also that Dread has extremely high crit chance already, so you don't really need to increase the crit chance that much. Uh, the other options are Elemental Balance, giving a massive status chance increase of 24 versus the 10 of Survivor's Edge, or Zeroed In, increasing your base crit damage by plus 1x. Since we're getting red crits, that could be the strongest one of these uh, of all of these, but also I'm definitely thinking that the status chance increase could be good since this thing is going to be Slash and Heat on the Incarnon mode. So, Dread not looking... I mean, it's... It's going to just be like Nataruk Arrows. If Nataruk Arrows isn't exciting enough for you, you might want to roll the dice with something else fun or just wait for creators to put up videos on the rest of this stuff. But yeah, Dread, uh, it's probably not going to be as exciting as we were hoping for, unfortunately. That leak stuff seemed like it was a little bit <laughs> little bit over uh, over eager. Despair and Karnon, this is going to be one of the more rare stalker weapons, at least to me it feels like the most rare one. It's some throwing stars. Uh, headshot to charging Karnon, as, as usual on these things. For your first evolution, now this is a pistol, keep that in mind. Fatal Affliction increases uh, damage by plus 50 and also uh, plus 40% direct damage per status type affecting the target. So Condition Overload as a Tier 1 option is actually pretty nice. So we have Condition Overload on Tier 1. Stalker's Vendetta is your other option, giving you increased 60, uh, plus 60 base damage instead of uh, 50 from Fatal Affliction. With, with you, the Dread and the Hate are also equipped. Multi-shot consumes ammo directly from the capacity, increases damage by plus 100%, and also gives you plus 30 multi-shot. The way this is worded, it sounds like the plus 30 multi-shot is not going to work unless you have the Dread and the Hate equipped. But it is kind of spaced differently, so do we actually get this 30% multi-shot or not? Uh, I'll, I might pick this one, so we'll see. But either way, these are both very powerful options. Um, although the other one, the, the Stalker's Vendetta does not seem to really do much unless you have these weapons equipped. Although it does give you 60 base damage instead of 50, but I'll take Condition Overload over that. For Tier 3 or Utility stuff, you've got Reload Speed uh, of 100%, 50% projectile speed, projectile speed increase, or minus 30% Zoom. Your choice. Uh, projectile Speed could be okay, but also Reload. This thing reloads a lot, so Reload Speed could be a, a nice. Also help you switch to Incarnate Mode faster. For the final tier, we've got Evo 4 on the Despair. Uh, elemental Balance, increasing your base status chance by plus 24. A lot, obviously. Uh, Survivor's Edge, giving you crit chance and status chance. So it doesn't have that much crit chance at base, so you might want to go for a crit chance upgrade here. Or Critical Parallel, the biggest crit chance upgrade of them all. Um, increasing crit chance by 18% and crit damage by 0.4. And these should be at base before mods. So this one does have an upgrade if you are using the Despair and the Hate. Or rather, all three of the soccer weapons. I don't remember if the if the if the um, the dread had one of those. Did it? The dread does not have an Incarnon upgrade involving the stalker's other weapons. So keep that in mind. If you are picking the dread, it is not going to really be as synergistic with the other ones. I'm really. I thought that there was going to be one, but I guess the leaks. You know, don't believe the leaks all the time. All right, we're going to the hate scythe. This is the stalker signature weapon. A reminder: I will be likely doing a ribbon giveaway for this thing in like the next day or two. So if you're interested in checking out my live stream, come on, stop by. It's like a viral crit chance ribbon with minus corpus. So pretty decent. All right, so 6x heavy attack. Uh, activate the Incarnon mode. Apparently, the light attacks release some, like, projectile, but it's not saying that in this description. That was in, like, the video that the that DE gave early access to somebody. Uh, but increased melee damage by 100%, plus 20% sprint speed and 20% bullet jump. So these are higher uh, mobility increases than the Siberia, as you can see. 10% on sprint speed and bullet jump here, 20% on the hate. So you're going to be moving a lot faster. As far as your upgrades, you got Swordsman's Flourish, increasing your base damage by plus 30, with only a melee weapon equipped, plus 100% combo count. I hate how they do that. Please don't do that anymore, DE. No melee only Incarnons, please. Uh, but yeah, you'll get increased combo count if you only have a melee equipped. Stalker's Legacy is an increasing the base damage by plus 30. With a Dread and the Despair equipped, you have a plus 30 initial combo. So it's funny. These two have things involving the whole set, but the Dread does not. I find that a little bit odd. Uh, but as far as these two... There honestly is going to be a lot of times that none of these Incarnons on this tree actually even do anything besides the plus 30 base damage. So I'd say pick the Incarnon to fit your situation, uh, <laughs> but I'm not going to be running around with the Dread and the Despair, to be honest. For Tier 3 Utility stuff, we got uh, 0.8 extra range. The Scythe, pretty good range already. Uh, we've got Swift Break, increasing heavy attack windup speed. 
Scythes do have Force Heavy Slash Proc, so maybe go for that. Or 10 seconds of extra combo duration with Resolute Force. For the final tier upgrades, you've got Evo 4, Absolute Valor, increasing crit chance by plus 10%. This thing already can red crit, so a little bit unnecessary. Uh, increasing status chance by 20% with Absolute Dominion. I don't remember how much status chance this thing has, but that could be okay. Uh, and then also Subtle Force, increasing both crit chance and status chance by smaller amounts. 6% crit chance and 10%. Status chance. So that's your week six Incarnon options. As far as the ones I'd recommend to you after reading all these Incarnons and after I saw the head, the hate and the dread, I would probably say Zylock and maybe Despair. Um, you know, these Incarnon op options on the Despair sounded pretty powerful. Uh, you know, condition overload, uh, built in on tier one, a crit increase on tier three. I don't know what the Incarnon's gonna be like, but yeah, uh, this one sounds pretty decent. Um, and also the Zylock, every Incarnate in the Zylock sounded really good, so... Uh, and the Zylock also doesn't have really good crit right now, but it can still kill heavy heavy gunners in the Simulacrum in one bullet anyway. So that's probably what I've got recommend to you. Um, but of course, I will have a community post later tonight. Check out my live or check out my live stream if you want to come by and you know get, gather the information with me. But uh, yeah, I'll have a community post on my channel tonight on YouTube going over all these Incarnons and the day one first impressions from the community and from me as well, so... Hope you guys found this fun and helpful. Nightwave weekly reset video coming out in the next couple minutes, and I'll be live on stream right after that, too. So come on, stop by. All right, guys, have fun grinding out your Incarnons. And yeah, week one will rotate around next week with the Bow and Carnon, Skana and Carnon, Bratton, et cetera, et cetera. So I might not do these anymore, but hey, we'll see. Uh, that will be know a lot more information. I'll be able to make more educated, uh, you know, recommendations on this stuff going forward. So I appreciate all you guys' support. See you soon, and take it easy. Peace!